My name is Shane Haparachi. I'm an attorney here with Jacoby and Myers, and I've been uh, talking about burden of proof with juries for the last 10 years. So the burden of proof, it's the idea of how sure does a jury have to be in order to side for your client. As the plaintiff, that means the person who's injured, burden of proof is always on us. And the burden of proof in a civil case like this, in a personal injury context, it's called the preponderance of evidence, which is just a fancy word of saying more likely than not. It just means 51% versus 49. If we've tipped the scales at all in favor of our client, we've met that burden of proof. In a criminal context, so that's when a DA or someone like that is trying to put someone in jail, we have a different burden of proof. It's called beyond a reasonable doubt. In a criminal context, because we're taking someone's liberty away, and sometimes even in the worst situations, we're taking someone's life away, we wanna have a much higher standard of proof. And that's why it's called beyond a reasonable doubt. If you had to put a percentage on it, it would be somewhere around 90%. In order to send this person to jail, we wanna be 90% sure that they're guilty. It's a much better thing to let a guilty person go free than the opposite, which is to put an innocent person in prison. So we wanna be very sure. It's hard to say, here's how to do it. Again, for example, if you were looking at a scale and when you have a whole bunch of evidence on one side and a whole bunch of evidence on the other, if a juror weighs that evidence and it's exactly even, that means they're 50-50, which means we have not met our burden of proof. But if we have more evidence or better evidence or just more convincing evidence of our case and we tip the scales just slightly. Now picture that scale is just like you put a feather on that one side and it goes down just slightly. Now we're at 51% versus 49%. We've met our burden of proof. The idea of negligence is did someone act reasonably in a certain situation. So for example, if you're driving your car and you're texting and you hit someone, that's not a reasonable thing to do. You are negligent. That would be a very easy burden of proof to meet because we know they were doing something unreasonable. Again, what we talked about today is the burden of proof, meaning how sure does a jury have to be in order for us to win the case? There's different burdens of proofs in different types of cases. In a personal injury case, the burden of proof is more likely than not, meaning if, the, if we can convince a jury by 51%, that means we have met our burden of proof. If it's exactly 50-50, we have not.